So, so we're going to talk about drop shot. Now, the whole thing about drop shotting and the reason that we're going to talk about it is because it's a real versatile technique. I mean, I get questions about it all the time. There's people that really like to drop shot fish. There's a million different ways you could do it. You could do it from, they, it's very prominent in California. It's very prominent on the East Coast, and it's very prominent from Ontario down to, down to the southern United States. It originated in Japan, so, I mean, it works all around the world to catch bass. It's a very, very effective technique. Yes, especially August, going into September, late summer, and you get low oxygen in the water, um, and, and they become tough to catch. And then a drop shot. The other thing you got to remember about it, and why we rely on it in these situations, like like this. This is this is actual, you know, hummingbird graph imagery from my depth finder a couple years ago. If you look at this, it's pretty obvious we're coming out of. Well, it's 28.2 right here. So we're coming out of like 23, 24 foot of water. We're going down this drop where you can see the, the margin is wider and you can see the marks on the drop. And if you look at this on side imaging, you can see all oh, those, it's a little fuzzy because it's blown up, but you see those white slashes. Those are the fish right on the drop. Everybody's following me there? You see this? This big mound. This, this was the hump. This was the top of the hump, 22, 23 foot. You see what's on this? It's nothing smooth. You see what's on this? Nothing. And in between where it drops, what do you see right here? Rock. Okay, that's a little bottom transition, seam change, stair step, whatever jargon you want to use. And that's where the fish live. So when we're out and we're going to fish in big water, and we're going to fish in four foot waves or the wind starts to blow like we were talking about the last time, and you get these big monster waters, well the fish are not here nor are they here. They're only right there in 27, 28 foot of water. That can be pretty easy when you drive over the creek channel or the hump or the ledge or the drop off on your small lake and they're in 27 foot of water and you throw your marker buoy out and you go back up and you flip your trolling motor in and you set down your coffee and you grab your rod, you throw it over the marker buoy, and it goes to the bottom, you lift it up, it goes thump, you set the hook. Well, on these lakes, as soon as you set, you dump your coffee, you know, your coffee dumps when you set it on the deck and you're going up and down and you can barely stand on the front deck. The fish are still there, okay? You know it and I know it and they know it and they will bite, but just getting your bait to them becomes a huge, huge issue. Now, Traditional bottom bumping baits like tubes or jigs will work or hula grubs or football jigs and at times those could be the best thing you can use. Um, blade baits in certain situations, heavy baits that get down at the bottom, but those baits have a tendency to snag a little bit more and then also once we get in that summer funk, the fish just kind of, smallmouth especially, will kind of get off of stuff that's crawling on the bottom. Nothing is automatic in fishing except for the Sanko, right? That's what I tell everybody. They go, you sponsored by Yamamoto? I go, nope, I buy them just like you. And I get ticked off every time I use them because I go through a million of them. Nothing is automatic, but that shimmy fall of that super slow bait. Now, if we take a heavy jig, if we take something like a big tube or something that gets to the bottom, we're kind of losing that feel, right? But if you take a drop shot, and you have a leader that's that long, and your sinker goes shoom and hits the bottom, what's that bait do? It just goes like a weightless Senko. It's, it's one way to put that. Granted, it's not as good as if that Senko was allowed to drift by itself all the way down to the bottom, but it's a pretty close second once that weight hits the bottom and you're fishing real easy and your line's swinging around and the current and the bait's swinging around. It's that super subtle technique but it's on the bottom in 28 foot of water instantly. That's why it's the most efficient deep water finesse, ta true finesse tactic you can use. I hope you enjoyed the preview clip and for more like that and the entire collection, subscribe to the Bash University TV. And if you want the tackle that you see on there, I want you to go to the Bash University tackle shop 
powered by Tackle Warehouse and click right here and it's all at your fingertips. If you want to become a better angler, you want to catch more and bigger bass at your local pond? Then check out Bass University TV for hardcore bass fishing information. Hey, I'm Pete Gluzek. And I'm Mike Iaconelli. And this is Bass University TV. Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. Everywhere I go in the country, I'm trying to use these techniques because I catch big fish that way. From on the water to in the classroom. We want to use that bait to help make that area even smaller and really, really find that sweet spot. You'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. You want something that's got a nice limber action that's going to allow you to build pressure and keep those hooks pinned against that fish's mouth. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Hold on, because you're going to catch the big <laughs> fish. Information is power in the sport of fishing, so learn from the very best. That's a key theory in all of fishing. Subscribe to Bass University TV today. Man, does it trigger a lot of strikes. Here's the part that you're not going to hear anywhere else. This is the Bash University TV exclusive.